more your words are in line with the truth, the more powerful those words are. And I don't know where you are, if you believe in God or not. I don't know who kind of kind of person you are. But like, like when you line your words up with God, like that's when to me, your words have the most weight. A few days ago, popular YouTubers, Coach Greg Adams and Hafiz from the YouTube channel, The Roommates, had a somewhat of a debate on the Valuetainment Money YouTube channel. And it concerned you know, is marriage really valuable for men, right? That was kind of the concept. And I'm not going to go over the entire uh, argument, just a few points about it. And um, I'm going to be talking about it here and let's get your reaction on it and let's see who wins this debate. Me, it's just not a yes or no yeah. question. But so, Hafiz, what's your issue with yeah, this? Go so, ahead. So, it's, a, it's always an interesting conversation because to me, like, like one of the things I'm obsessed with, and Dr. Peterson talks about this so well, is that the more your words are in line with the truth, the more powerful those words are. And I don't know where you are, if you believe in God or not, I don't know who kind of kind of person you are, but like, like when you line your words up with God, like that's when to me your words have the most weight. Dr. Peterson, that's why I feel like he's so powerful. His words transcend humanity and it speaks on this divine level. And so to me, when you're giving advice, your advice has to be as in line with what God believes the world should run as possible. And so to me, the best advice benefits men and benefits women. That's the best advice. The, to your opinion, said we had 70 years of advice only benefiting women and men suffering as because of it. That is a lie. That is wrong. And, this, and the opposite extreme is wrong as well. A world where it all benefits men and, and the women don't benefit is wrong. That's why it's about the balance. And so to me, I'm very curious about, I love her questions because it was like, I, I mm -hmm. it's not a gotcha question. It was a, a genuine, serious question. Shout out my guy, AMS. I love AMS. He did a video about, you know, advice I would give to my daughter where he actually answers the questions directly. And so to me, I, I'm very interested in those questions because like when I would watch Kevin Samuels and God rest the dead, and, and it was so powerful because he would- Man, this dude seems so phony, man. Shut up. I'm like, I mean, try not to say that about the dude. Dude is corny, man. I mean, I'm just gonna be real, man. You talk, you, bro. You talking way too much, man. Like, I already don't like this guy today. You, let's, let's let's continue. He would always push women to being married because he knew the beauty and the value and the protection and the safety, like, like in of being a woman and being married. Nobody wants their daughter to be 41 years old, single mm -hmm. mom, baby mom of three. Nobody wants that for their right. daughter, especially if they want kids. So to me, I think the, 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 the part of the conversation needs to be, is this information benefiting both human beings. When you're on team men, it only needs to benefit team men. If you're on team Republican, it only needs to benefit team Republican. If you're on team America, it has to benefit all Americans. It Bro, okay, okay, man. You just talking to hear yourself talk, man. Just shut up. All right, you making some okay points here and there, man, but let the guy talk. If you're on team human, it has to benefit both males and females. So that's why I loved her questions because I think the best, like, I can give my hardcore advice to benefit men and i know without a shot of a dike the most hardcore advice that benefits men doubt not dike it's men simultaneously benefits women one one more thing i'll add to that and i hope you I, I don't mean to offend you there's no god in marriage in the united states so that's kind of misleading and people will find that out if your marriage is destroyed you go back to your pastor and you say hey my marriage is being destroyed he has no power over that because it is a state agreement so i will bring you back to make sure you understand and i counsel men there's no God in marriage. Well, that's been gone. Well, well, Listen, well, it was an no. old idea. It's absolutely gone unless you that's live in an true. American South. So, so you, most people on the West Coast, many people in the East Midwest, there's no God in marriage. So well, we break know that this. down. That's what do you mean there's no God in marriage? There's no God in marriage. So people get married. One mm -hmm. of the things that they will do is they will seek counsel of the church. Mm -hmm. And then as such, the guys will give them guidance and it will be biblical principle. However, they will say, we can't do anything until you sign this state sponsored agreement mm -hmm. with family law context. All right. They're not going to have a Bible in there. They're not going to have a Bible in that divorce court. The judge is not going to ask you, do you like God? And what about God in your marriage? There will be no context to that. And such as mm -hmm. such, what is the overriding principle here? Does he your have a marriage there, is Hafiz? state funded, no, not God like, funded. He has made a. a... I mean, uh, that's those are facts. I mean, and y'all know like how 
I'm not really a big Coach Greg Adams fan. Y'all know how me and him, you know, I, whatever. But what he's saying is true. This guy is talking about corny stuff. If your words align with guy like, like, bro, like, what are you talking about, man? You're trying to sound like you're really hella influential or something, bro. Like, nobody has time for all that nonsense. You know, like, Jordan Peter, who cares about him? The, the, the reality is that God is not going to help you in a state-governed marriage. That's what he's dealing with. Ain't no God in marriage. All right? It's a lot of people going to see their pastors, you know, going to be sending Christians. And most people who profess to be Christians really ain't Christians, right? That's what he's dealing with. And I think the guy is going to have a hard time dealing with this. And you'll notice because he'll start getting real mad. All right? I made a, a random point. That I didn't make a random. I that, told you that, that this so, will so offend first, you. Was I, I, and it's not offended you. What did I say? No, it didn't offend me. You're just wrong. Let me, make, let me say. But I'm wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me finish. Oh, no, no, right. let, me, let me finish. Then, let me, there's let, no, let me, hold on, bro. You had the floor for two and a half minutes. Now you want to talk after you was rambling about a whole bunch of nothing with your weird ass. Now all of a sudden you want to like talk again and you don't know what you're talking about. It's already, I can already tell. Like you, 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 you're a, a Mike hog. You're a Russell Westbrook of the podcast, Mike, but you don't have anything important to say. God, let, let me finish. In the marriage in let the me United finish States. and you can talk. Let me finish. And you no, no, hold for a second. Let me, let me, let me finish. Are you going to say? You been talking. Let me, there's can no I finish? God in the marriage in the United States. Coach, Coach finish your point. You're saying yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no God in marriage in the United States. Correct. Got it. That I was his point. So I, now, now I'm going to talk. So I made a point and I said, if your truth aligns with God, mm -hmm. that truth is most powerful. That's what I said. If your truth aligns with God, meaning the word that you speak aligns with God, those words are the most powerful. But he made a point saying there is no God in marriage. So so first, that's a semantic thing because God is everywhere. Whether God chooses to supervene in things or not, I, am, I will never be the person that says God is not here. I will never be the person that says God is not present here. Could we argue that that is God blessing every... Bro, that's not his point. Like I said, I'm not even a Coach Greg Adams fan, and that's not his point. What they're saying is in the state courtroom, they're not talking about your it, your faith in God has nothing to do about what the outcome of the state is. When your wife divorces you and it's come to alimony, it's not biblical. We're not based on biblical rules. You're talking about something else that has nothing to do with the conversation. Why they invited you here, I have no idea. American Western marriage? Of course not. Of course, God is not blessing every American, but God is definitely in my parents' marriage. So when you say there is absolute statements, there is no God in marriage. False. There, correct. There is no God in some marriages. There is no God in most marriages in regards to by being there, no God, meaning that God's not blessing it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that God is not blessing what's happening in most marriages, that is a true statement. But to say there is no God in marriages, period, that is a false statement because God is in my marriage and God is also in my parents' marriage. And I will continue to say, when it comes to even understanding the ideas of God, God gives human beings free will. It's a very simple concept. You can freely sin or you can freely obey. And God, like a good father, if you want to touch the stove, you can touch the stove. And so to me, I just think when you're making, when people make statements like this, how, like, how do you expect people to feel? There is no I don't God. I anybody to I'm, feel. I'm, I'm, I want I'm them still, to I'm still know. Talking. I want I'm, them I'm, to hey, understand. Hey, 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 hey. God has no argument, so he's starting to get upset. Okay, that's, that's how you know you have. You've been talking for almost four and a half minutes of this. I want them hey, to hey, understand. Hey, hey, we want them hey, to know. I'm we talking, can't feel anything. I'm talking. I'm talking. And then you get an opportunity to talk. So to me, it's how do you expect people to react? And so my biggest thing is that what I'm only communicating in regards to the marriages is that if you are a man, do your due diligence. Be able to see if she fits your life. Be able to see what is her family background. You can't you can't protect yourself 100% from business failure, from friendship failure, from anything in life. But there is wisdom. There is godly principles that you can adhere to that can benefit you. But there's no absolute guarantees that everything in life will be successful. No one's teaching anybody. That. But, and I'm not the most religious person here. So let me just me give that disclaimer out there. You either. Right. But yeah, yeah. How, like, I feel like God or is all faith. It's yeah. all... I believe in this, and no matter what you tell me, you're not going to convince me otherwise, because this is what I believe. 
I'm sure that there's tons of marriages out there that they believe they go to church every Sunday and then next thing you know, it's they get divorced and God was in their marriage. So I'm just trying to establish what a godless marriage is or, or God-filled marriage is, like yeah. how how that, that generally curiosity, like how that works. Because he's saying, no, I think what I think what Coach is basically saying is like, look, I don't care if you go to church every Sunday or not. At the end of the day, your marriage is between you, your significant other, and the right state. here on earth. Forget about it. Not in the clouds. Precisely. That's his point. At the seven in the mark, doesn't matter, right? Let's continue. And that's talk, what he's. That's right, did what you what ask saying. him a question, or no, do you I'm, just, want to I'm, just, I'm just bringing well, this out to people, the panel. What, what, what we tell people is that yeah. hope is not a strategy. All right, hope is not a strategy in anything. I hope my business goes well. I hope I don't get injured today. I hope I succeed today. We mm -hmm. tell people real life principles, all right? We don't live in the clouds. We live here on earth, whether you believe this is heaven or hell. So I want you guys to understand you're dealing with earth here. Are and you, this uh, is a reality. Are this you a, a believer? Absolutely not. No. You're not You're no. not a believer of God? No, no. Okay, but Were obviously, you Hafiz, you are. Yeah. And Were so, you ever a believer? So how can no. you say that? Um, here's, here's, here's the deal. What, 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 what tends to happen is, um, yep. what tends to happen is uh, people are introduced to things based on someone else's biases. Okay, and those biases are introduced to children and so forth and so on. So, yes, at some point, that was the only story I knew until I investigated on my own, decided as a man what principles to stand on and realize mm -hmm. I don't live by hope. I don't live by cope. I live with what's real here. Okay. And let's talk about what's real instead of the mystique of this damn thing here. What's real is hope is not a strategy. So if you don't I love it, if, can, if I, you, can I address it? Yeah, yeah, go quick? ahead. Yeah. So first and foremost, like I said, it's very interesting. I've always told you, you got to hear someone's background mm -hmm. and then you know where they lean. That's where you know where their vice gears towards. So it's such a, it's such a, even when we, I talk about God, Mm -hmm. Like the the idea of God in his brain is not the idea I'm talking about. It's this interesting verse in the Bible. I won't get too lost in the sauce in the book of Isaiah where where God is where the, the somebody's like farming and he's talking about the intricacies of farming. And he says, even that wisdom comes from God. God is not the God of get married happily ever after. That's foolishness. Is God gives you wisdom. What is the wisdom? Actually do premarital counseling. What is the wisdom? Actually be able to decide, okay, if things don't work out, what are we going to do? Where are the kids going to go? What's the money going to go? Things going to work out. Who's going to be the primary breadwinner? Who's not? God gives you the wisdom to be intelligent, to be able to navigate. Hope is not a strategy. 100% right. Hope is not a strategy. But God's message is not just simply blind hope. It's wisdom. Literally, Jesus said, be as, be as wise as a serpent, but as innocent as a dove. You have to understand how to, what, what does a serpent do? He's able to navigate on this earth. Mm -hmm. So 100% right. No one's teaching hope as a strategy. That's a straw man argument. But true godly wisdom is relevant. True godly wisdom is what made Adam a millionaire. True godly wisdom is what made Patrick Bet David build this amazing company. It's actual practical step-by-step -step guidance that benefits people's lives. Mm -hmm. So no one's talking about hope being a strategy. Simply pray to God and your marriage is going to work out. That's foolishness. What did I say? Naivete, ni nihilism, realism is in the middle. No one's saying being naive. So when I'm talking about godliness in marriage, mm -hmm. those are certain principles and wisdoms. Is it going to make your... Is it going to be that if you follow God, you will never get a divorce? No, there, there's, there's, not, there's nothing in life where nothing bad is going to happen. You can do everything the right way and the wrong thing can still happen. But does that mean you should do things the wrong way? Absolutely not. And so my biggest. Or I'm tired of hearing that talk. Um, he made some interesting points there. OK. And obviously, I believe both of these guys are biased. One is a non-Christian and is divorced and coach Greg Adams. And this guy obviously is recently married and is a. Um, full body Christian. The reality is, as a man, you're dealing with a woman. Godly, Christian or not, if you don't lead with some sort of position of strength and that woman does not respect you and you don't check those behaviors early on, you are headed towards the divorce. All right? Godly or not godly. You have Christian couples getting divorced every day. The reality is, is that marriage has less to do, I think, about, you know, believing in God. Because God is important. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm also a believer. But, 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 but more or less, it has a lot more to do with, if I'm going to be honest, 
your ability as a man to know what you're supposed to be doing and getting mentorship as a man and understanding how to lead, understand how to communicate with the woman, understand that as time goes on, these things are harder, setting your expectations. God is important, right? But God doesn't save or break marriages as much as people think. Um, but anyways, that's my opinion. I think it was a good argument. I think that the, the Hafiz guy's annoying, but he made a few points. I think that Coach Greg Adams actually got the better of this round, though. We're out. Peace.